Hi guys, welcome back to the fourth lesson of the online 3D modeling tutorials. And this video we will do a little bit different than the previous. We will not create an object from scratch. We will rather modify uh, an existing object. And the reason is because I'm going to show the deform tools and that could be shown on an existing object as well. Um, I'm not, I also like to show first that I created a new project. So you see this is my Corona project, this new one, it shows me it's loaded. This is deform. Um, this is how I call this project because we're going to be talking about mostly about the deform tools. I also want to say that, I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, that SelfKit can import almost every object. So you can go to import, you can import even a 2D file like an SVG and it will convert it to 3D. But for the most part, it will import any 3D file, uh, like a CAT file, like a STP or STEP, or any mesh file, kind of like OBJ, STL, and many other, I think like 20 plus file types, which means you can find objects for, I think just the few biggest uh, hosting sites like GrabCat, Tinkerverse, and those uh, include like over 6 million objects so you can modify. Uh, but for this video lesson, I'm going to use what SelfKit integrates, which is my mini factory. Uh, you have directly, you see over here, you can share my mini factory uh, once you have an object, or you can connect to load from my mini factory. In my case, I created a my mini factory account and I logged in over here. So you can see if you disconnect, uh, you have an option to connect, but I guess I already have an account, so it will just ask me to uh, connect. But if you have no account, we'll ask you to register. And if you have an account, it will just ask you, you can log in, log in or register basically over here. You can also go directly to my mini factory, create an account or here, it doesn't matter. Um, so for now, you can see in my mini factory over here, you can search browse based on categories. Um, I think they have a total of 50,000 objects, which is not significant compared to Tinkiverse or GrabCat and these type of uh, applications. But I think what they do have is it says guaranteed 3D printable, which makes sure the object must be printable. And that's quite good uh, when you start working with, you know, you have good objects that someone has uh, viewed that and, and modified, make sure it's not modified, but actually uh, approved that make sure it's good. Um, you can also search. I was actually quite surprised to type in SelfCat and see how many objects uh, it's here based on keywords SelfCat. So I guess these are related to, it looks like related to videos what SelfCat is teaching how to model and they upload their objects over here, which is quite remarkable. Uh, for my part, I have an object that someone shared with me once that was actually broken. I fixed it in SelfCat and I'm using this object now um, over here for this. So I uploaded this object. Uh, this object I just uploaded like an hour ago and in my mini factory, just want to show you how it works. They have something, a software check, which I was pleased to see it's working because before it was shown like a red arrow, uh, a red check mark because it's not approved because the object was broken. And I was pleased to see that after using SelfCat's tools to fix um, it's already showing the software approved it that it's working, but looks like even though the software approved it, it still takes a while someone maybe manually to remove that and make it Wonderland and publish. I'm not sure how they work, uh, but nevertheless, for now, I'm going to use load this object over here. And here you go. We have the object in the scene. So I need to, the object looks like a little bit too small. I'm going to scale it. I have to select it first, obviously, and I'm going to scale it proportionately. Um, keep proportion, I'll make this 200. And we'll start first with the basic ideas um, for deform. So deform actually is, is quite easy to explain because it's very self-explanatory. If you look over here where this is going, it's skew, you can find an example, skew, something like this. And if you do, um, let's say for example, move, let me I just undo this first. If you move the gizmos position, let's say to the top, it will kind of skew the different way. And if you move it to the center, kind of, Obviously, the obvious will skew it in a different way, kind of like this. So these are kind of self-explanatory, but I would like to explain one thing more of a technical way. So this I'm doing my scaling. Okay, so more of a technical way, what it is. So when we think about transformations, uh, we have the flexibility of selecting, as we have seen in the previous lesson, we can select just edges or just faces or just um, vertices or the entire object and scale them, move them, rotate them in any direction. and um, you have different axes. You can move it on just on the x-axis or just z, just y. And same scale, we have um, um, symmetric or asymmetric, we explained in the previous lesson. But nevertheless, whatever you do in, in the axis, it will all move in the same direction. So there's no way of moving, saying is, for example, I select the entire object and say move parts of it more and parts less, depending on where my gizmo is, which is the pivot point, or it's called function from a mathematical way. Um, 
how you move it. And this is where deform is different. Deform is something that is all non-linear. These are called linear because they all will work exactly the same way. Whatever you have selected will move or rotate or scale the same way, um, even symmetric or asymmetric, but it will still be all proportionately the same way. Whereas <coughs> in deform, it's all about non-linear transformation. So some of these transformations are just simple move, rotate, scale, just non-linear. So you can think about this as kind of like scaling non-linear, whereas uh, skew is like moving non-linear, and and twist is twist gets a little bit more advanced because twist is most likely more. You see, I can give it like if you want to give it a different angle, posing for the camera or whatever. Um, if you see, twist is more about a rotation but it's most likely more than a rotation i'm actually not sure it may be just a rotation but i'm assuming it's more than just a rotation but then you have certain tools like bent is definitely more than one function so bent you can see if i'm grabbing this this is kind of like you cannot do that in a, a linear way. Well, it's, it's kind of like rotation plus moving i think uh maybe just rotation in this direction i don't think so i think it's rotation plus moving so and some of these tools are unique where in a sense, the same thing in flight, uh, you can inflate this, make it look, let's say, more muscular, and I shouldn't do it probably each of the sides, maybe just one side over here. So you're kind of making it like this, inflating it, making it look more like this, and doing the opposite way, in this case, doesn't work that much because this object has uh, is hollow and has duplicated faces, so they start intersecting, this, this is not a good idea. So, but you see over here how we can do this, kind of make it look quite chubby, and uh, this you could do over here, and the same thing is with flatten would be uh, kind of flattening it the opposite as inflate. So kind of like, look, we can start flattening the object and even flattening it to the total uh, final point. But you can't, you know, obviously go more than that. So that's basically what it is. So this is basically what this tool is doing. It's quite self-explanatory. Um, so it's basically, it's it's a transformation. Some of them may be combined more than one transformation, but it's mostly non-linear. When it comes to reshape, this is more an advanced tool. We're not going to explain it yet uh, now, and this is why it has like a logical divider. But it belongs in deform um, order because it has one thing in common, which they do not deform the amount of vertices. So I want to explain what I mean. So you can move and rotate and scale any parts of the object, and so you can deform, but it will not add objects. So let's say, for example, if I take a cube that has a very minimum, just uh, if you look over here, it has just edges, just six uh, faces on it. And if I'm going to bend this particular object, this will actually look like more like skewing than bending. If you look, let's say over here, look, it looks like more like skewing than bending because you cannot bend something that has no details on it. This is kind of like there's no details. But if I'm going to add some details to this, okay, so let's say I'm going to go to resolution over here and I'm going to add details, let's say three, uh, now you start seeing it will start actually acting more like bending. So you can see now it's just making some nicely rounded functions. And I'm not even going exactly to the, uh, you know, resolution, there's other tools to explain, but uh, the idea here is that you do not work with the objects themselves. Uh, I, I mean, you do not modify objects. You, you do not create different details on the objects or change the object. You just modify them and you, def I mean, you just deform them. It's called vertex displacement in a technical way. You kind of, displacing things how they are, same way that you displace them with these transformations, but it's a non-linear way and maybe a combination of other transformations. Whereas a modify, everything you do is all about changing the way the object structure looks like. Not just the way they appear on the screen, but also the object structure. And in the next lesson, hopefully, we'll go in more details about all of the modify tools. And so on with all these others, they, the more advanced they become, the more they will change the structure in, in one way or another. Um, I just want to show one more thing about bending over here. If I'm going to add resolution uh, again, did I add a resolution? Let's see. Yeah, okay, I do have the resolution. Uh, if you're going to bend this, um, there is a way, like the idea is that it always bends around a, a certain point. So I can change the point and bend around the top. It will bend differently than around the center. The default will be, uh, the actually, the bottom is the default. So, But what you have to understand is as you bend, the, the center is no longer, or the bottom, whatever it is, is no longer the same location because it goes on a distance from this point. And the more you bend, the more it becomes a different distance. So if I want to make this, let's say rotate this and make it uh, a 90 degree angle. So if I'm going to rotate this around the, the, and this is by the way, different than rotation. It's not rotation because in rotation, you expect to rotate around an axis. So if you think about you want to rotate this, your natural intuition would say rotate around the X. 
but bending it's towards and from an axis so if i want to make it this direction you see it's blue because in this case you need to go towards or from the axis which tells you by the way they do not use a rotation for this um, if you're going to do it like this look it's the blue axis you towards or from the blue so in that case if i want to make this completely circular let's say if i'm going to type in 360 degree uh, bend this 360 you see this gets destroyed it doesn't really get a 360 degree angle and this is because the center first of all it's the bottom so, but even if i'll do it the center from the middle and make it 360 it will look a little bit better but it will still not be perfect uh it's yeah you don't have enough edges maybe but still it's not it's not perfect so they do have another option over here which is called uh let's see where is this there's oh dynamic dynamic origin if you choose dynamic origin this is what will automatically reposition the center as it rotates. And it's quite a nice function that I love it. I tried it multiple times um, on different things. So in this case, I think the center work, but if you have more complex objects, I try this when I upload image 3D and things like that, where if you want to rotate them, um, or maybe if I have more details, this will make a difference. I mean, you can add the bend uh, much, uh, not bend, I'm sorry, uh, resolution i can add many more details and will look at much smoother as well so make it much nicer something like this and now i'll go to the uh, band and let's see if i'm gonna choose the middle and i'll do 360 um, yeah it looks relatively okay but here you see the bumps over here so it's not closing completely and it's kind of the offset so let's compare that with Let's undo this. Let's compare that with the the dynamic origin 360, and you see this is oh now you can see the difference. You see this is perfectly rounded, so this is basically the difference. But it depends what you want to do. You may choose um, either of these, but that's basically about these tools. So now I want to go in a little bit more and start touching about surface modeling. And in surface modeling, you care about the structure very much. So you can either look at uh, this mode, which in this case has too many edges and quite a mess, uh, or you can look at this mode, which still you see it's kind of like a soup mix. It's very difficult to do something with it um, because they're like not really organized. So my goal here is, what we do for this test, is I'm going to try to isolate here a, a kind of a cubic type of um, view, make this more like rectangular, and so it can be able to modify these pieces. Um, I can start selecting faces like individually, this will be quite tedious, or I can move to the polygon mode and then we'll select like all of the polygons, which is not exactly what I'm looking for now. So in this case, what, what can I do? So I'll go to faces first and I'll go to marquee selection. Marquee selection, you can use right clicking on your mouse. Uh, that's probably the easiest if you have a mouse. I use a touchpad and I always have issues with right clicking on my touchpad. So I'm gonna use this button over here, marquee selection. And you can simply start dragging. If you drag from right to left, it will select everything that it intersects, even if it doesn't intersect completely. If you drag from left to right, it will only intersect what it, inter what, it will only select what it intersects completely. So let's take a look. So you're gonna drag now from right to left. Uh, in this case, it didn't select nothing. So if I'm gonna try it again and select, let's say, go down to the bottom, it selects this bottom because this is completely intersecting while these did not completely intersect. So this is just something to know that uh, depending on what you're trying to do, how you're going to modify them, uh, how you're going to select. But for now, that should work, what I'm trying to achieve. And over here, this piece, is, you see, I can see this belongs to this, this piece should belong to the top. So I'm going to deselect this. And over here, I'm going to select again these. And again, these faces should belong to the top. So you see, I'm trying to get this, but now this is more of a not even. So if I'm gonna to try to do something like this, I, I wouldn't be able to do anything nicely. So what I'm gonna go now, do now is I'm gonna to go to the flatten tool and I'm gonna use this to flatten these faces down. So you can see until I move it down all the way, so now it's moved down all the way, but it's a little bit too, sh it's straightened out basically, it's completely straightened out. I can move the bottom as well, maybe the bottom is not very visible, but maybe it's also not very smooth. You can see here it has back faces, so it may not be a perfect example on this because I will need to select the back faces as well. But now this becomes too short and it's unproportionate, it's not even. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to the scale, and over here I'll enter the exact size that I'm planning to do this. And let's say I'll make this for 50, 
Um, so now you can see we got it a nicer size and I can then go and select this one and kind of reorganize them. But now if I go to, let's say, scale again or extrude, whatever I want to do with that, I can scale this uh, proportionately, let's say. Um, I want to see, um, I can have like all these other local transformations, all different things now, but I want to scale this now. I can scale individual um, to, or keep proportion. I want to keep proportion in this case, and I'm going to scale that, make this to 100. Okay, so let's see what's happening. So now you see I can start scaling them and it looks much nicer. Uh, in this case, you can see over here after scaling, uh, maybe I should have moved it down a little bit. It, it wasn't that visible that I didn't flatten it enough. In this case, you can just select one vertex and kind of move it and play around with that and kind of put it into position or you can just use again the flatten tool and play around. But this is basically in this case, the, the move tool was just doing its job. And as you can see, this is kind of where you start modeling with surface modeling. So I can kind of start now taking these and I can start building out, taking the shirt and actually turn it into a person. I can then start extruding, which we'll see on these tools on later sessions. And I can really start modifying these things um, as it's, uh, you know, as I'm trying to accomplish that. Um, so this is the basics. The other thing I want to show you is, in, as far as selection, is the idea of cube selection. And this is actually a very powerful tool and things like this as well, using in combination. So we have something over here called cube selection. And in this case, I can select things using actually cutting them. I can select them the same way we shown before. And I'm going to go to photographic view to make sure I see the object clearly. And uh, I think it's actually good. Uh, it looks, looks okay to me. So I'm going to go to, let's say, move it a little bit less up. Oh, this is my trying to move. And what am I doing over here? The cube selection. I'm not sure what I moved here. So, okay. Okay, so over here, something like this. So I can do the same thing and select them, like I said before, whatever intersects. If I turn off exact selection, it doesn't select everything. It's not going to cut in. So it, it may still be choppy because over here, if you see, this is like choppy selections over here. It's not really clear. But if I turn this on, I turn off transparency. It makes it look like see through the other, so you can't really see. So you can see over here, this is not evenly selected. It's not as bad, but it's not completely evenly selected. I'm going to even to move it a little bit more towards here. So over here, you see, this is not really very clear, even selected. But if I'm going to make exact selection, this is actually going to cut them in and it will be perfectly aligned with the line of the box. So in this case, that's what I'm going to do. It will make a cut and it cuts this in. So now if I'm going to rotate this, I can actually go and rotate this. I can use now rotation as well and start rotating around the, let's say this axis and start a little bit rotating it. But you see, it's, yeah, I can actually start doing that. And that will kind of give it to me um, an angle rotating the hands. But if I want to do different things, deformation, so let's say if I want to skew it now, I can kind of start skewing it and make it look like more like aligning this. And this, th this would be difficult with rotation. Um, you can do the rotation, but much more difficult. But let's say if I want to do um, taper now and I want to make it um, kind of shorter, the sleeves, and let's see. What am I doing over here? So let's say a little bit, just a little bit shorter, kind of like this, or you can make it in these gizmos. So you can start seeing how we can start playing with that. Uh, it gets a little bit more difficult to see this because I selected the sides over here as well, but to get the idea, you can do that. So what I was trying to do over here in the bottom, in cases like this, you can actually just go to cube selection um, and simply select the bottom piece and get it uh, selected cut out and then I have a perfect selection then you can start modifying it in many different ways that we will show hopefully next lesson the modified tools that we have a lot of additional uh, settings as well um, there's also a lot of additional settings in over here in the advanced settings for selection um, that I hope to touch in the upcoming lessons and then we need to cover still additional creation and much more to come so please stay tuned and let me know if everything is clear if you need me to clarify anything else uh, thank you for watching and have a great day. See you next time. Bye.